Hi, this is Linda from Linda West Cellos. Today I want to show you how to put strings on your cello um, and replace the old ones. Uh, there's a few methods to do this and I have my own reasons for the way that I do it. One of the primary reasons is you don't want to drop your sound post, so you don't want to take all four strings off at once because that will pretty much detention the bridge and the pressure that's on the sound post. Technically sound post shouldn't fall when you do that, but if for some reason it's too loose or too short, it will fall. So to avoid that from happening, we will start with two strings on the bass side, and then we'll do the two strings on the treble side. And there, in, as we go along, you'll understand why we're doing two and two. Um, I start with the bass side for you guys because this will give you a chance to comfortably get used to um, working with these friction pegs without the fear of breaking these strings. These strings are a lot more forgiving. So you'll be a little bit more confident when you get to the A and the D. The A is especially touchy. So the first thing I'm going to do is loosen up all my fine tuners down here at my tailpiece because as you know, they get pushed in all the way down and I just want to start with them out. So we're going to crank these out um, so we can use them at the end of tuning. When, once we get our strings on, we'll use these. Now these can buzz if you have them all the way out. So just keep that in mind. Um, but if you're finishing off with these, they won't, they'll, be, they'll have tension. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off the C string and the, and the G. And the reason why I don't just do one string at a time is because these strings in the back, the D and the G are kind of in the way. So we wanna get rid of, I just do one side then the other. So if I get rid of the G and the C, I can work on the bass side without any trouble. And I leave the A and the D up in order to keep tension on the sound post. So now we're gonna pretend like we've got new strings here. I'm gonna put the old ones back on. So we're gonna start, before we put the strings on, I gotta remind you that we first should lubricate the groove on the bridge here and here. The graphite helps the string slide so it doesn't tip the bridge when you're tuning. It still may, but it'll be a lot better. And it'll allow you some ability to adjust the bridge without friction um, if it does lean. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and put the C string in here. This is the ball end. And uh, I like to make it in there, put it in there vertically. If you put it in horizontally, it can get wedged underneath this slot, and then when you're fine-tuning it, it's not even working because it's caught. So we put it in vertical so that it will operate properly. And we're going to come back up here. And now how you wind the strings on the peg is, is pretty important. I have the G off. I start with the C because the G is out of my way. We want to finish up the C in line with this groove in the nut. This is your nut up here. Um, and when you wind your pegs, you don't wind under because it puts too sharp a bend here. You want to wind over the top of the peg. We're going to wind it on the far side first, then cross over. And then hopefully you don't do any more overlapping from this point on because that can prematurely wear your string out and we want to finish up in line with the groove of the nut. And in order to make sure you got enough friction, you can kind of turn the peg and push in when you don't have tension on that string, and then the friction should hold from there then on out. Don't pound, you could break your peg box. Just kind of go back and forth and give it some even pressure. So now we're gonna put the G on, same thing. The ball end goes in vertically. One of the things you gotta watch out for is getting it too far in and it gets underneath the arm <laughs> and then it won't work when you're using the fine tuner. It's supposed to be right here. Okay, come on up. It's a little different here. It depends on where the hole lands on the peg, how you should wind it. Uh, this hole is almost in line with where we want to wind up with the string, so I'm planning ahead. I'll probably wind a lot more wraps on the far side, then bring it over and do one or two wraps, probably two wraps 
on, and I'm gonna pull the peg out so to, to avoid the D string. Now I'm coming back over. And it's okay to overlap in the beginning, but at the end I would try to keep it without overlapping. And now we're pretty well in line with that groove. Now you're gonna have to plan ahead depending on where the hole is on your peg. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and remove, now that we have tension, we're pretty safe. We're not gonna drop the sound post. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the A. And I'm gonna actually replace these two strings because they look like they've been on there a while. So I got Larson A's here and A and a D actually. And the A has this kind of this brass winding and it has a brass ball end. I'm going to go ahead and oh, get a lubricate. Don't forget to lubricate. And I put my fingers here because you can see what I just did. Put your fingers here to keep the pencil from slipping and then marking up the bridge. Kind of an aesthetic thing. We're also going to lubricate the nut. And here we go. Same thing. Ball in vertically. And then come over here. Now the A groove on the nut is very close to the edge of the peg box. And the hole is pretty far away, so I probably don't have to do too many wraps on this side. And I can come right over and then just start laying the, the string down and finishing off right near the cheek of the peg box. We'll come back and tune it in a minute. So last but not least, I'm going to do the D. Again, you roll over and I'm going to do several windings over here then I'm going to bring it over and I pulled it out just to sort of snug it up it's my way of reorganizing the wraps so now we're going to check and make sure that the bridge isn't leaning. And if you're going to set the bridge, you put your two thumbs underneath the metal two strings. And I've got my arms up here on the corners and I make sure I don't press anywhere on the F holes. You don't want to crack your jaw and I just sort of push it back. The strings, as you tune, might pull the bridge up. So you might have to do that one more time at the end. So now we're going to go ahead and bring up the C. comfortable going a little sharp because by the time I tune these up they'll all be flat so on the A is the and if you need to make sure that you got tension you can do that before you start putting getting close to pitch you don't want to start uh, adjusting your friction like this once you're really close to being to pitch on the A string do it early and then so we got F sharp I'm going to leave it there, do the D. So now I'm just like a bit flat of A. I'm going to finish off with these fine tuners just to be safe. And that's one reason why we turned them all out. sharp and these are loose you can always stretch the string that'll make it go flat again then you can turn these in and that's pretty much how it's done we'll do one more check the bridge looks like it's doing pretty good it's not leaning uh, towards the fingerboard 
everything is in its right place. You can double check and make sure all the strings are in their correct location. And I hope that helps you all.